Om Namo Narayanaya, uh, Dr. Vastare, dear devotees. A warm and loving welcome to our session two of the Devotee Wellbeing. The Devotee Wellbeing is a monthly program with Dr. Vastare that cares for the devotees' mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being based on positive psychology principles. A few words of introduction to Dr. Vastare. She is a neuroscientist, teacher, writer, and social worker, and also the co-founder of the Yoga Kshema Rehabilitation and Wellness Center. A warm welcome to all our devotees, both nationally and internationally. Uh, we thank you for joining us tonight. And without further ado, I like to now hand you over to Dr. Vastare. Thank you, Dr. Sharad. Om Namo Narayana for everybody. Let me start sharing the slides and then we will start off. Okay. You're able to see the screen, right, Shara? It's okay? Uh, yes, it's perfect, uh, Dr. Right. Vasar. All right. So we started this program a month back. During the first session, we learned about the positive psychology principles based on PERMA, PERMA model. And just to recap, just with the slide, what we have done last time is PERMA stands for having positive emotions and to be engaged fully in whatever we are doing based on our strength so that we have some sustained joy or happiness during our activities or our work. And the interpersonal relationships are so important in our well being. Many a times we take this for granted. We do not realize the importance of interpersonal relationships, whether it be it in, at the family level or with the co workers at our career level or at the ashram level when with other devotees. So the quality of interpersonal relationships play, will play a huge role in our well-being. And figuring out the meaning and purpose of our life, we went through this aspect a little bit more in detail last last month and then I will touch upon it again a little later and then how what is it that we need to accomplish accomplishment not like we see at the career level um, be in a competitive mode in a in this dog eat dog world and to achieve something rather than competing with others to compete with ourselves as I always say Mirror has to be your competition. That, is, that means we need to be better than what we were before. And while we achieve or accomplish, what we become as we achieve is more important than our achievement itself. So with this, we understood what the... Um, PERMA model stands for, and we modified this PERMA model, especially for us as devotees, and especially based on Sri Ramakrishna's message. And so we changed that PERMA model to PREMA model, because Thakur, or our master, always talks about bhakti, Prema Bhakti, Raga Bhakti. So Bhakti is nothing but Prema. Prema or love towards God is Bhakti. Prema towards God is nothing but Bhakti. So we have switched 
the Parma model to Prema model and with little bit of addition with what whatever we have learned so far based on uh, the neuroscience principles. Again here, P stands for positive emotions and that could be gratitude, compassion, empathy, love, understanding, just to name a few. And R here, of course, stands for relationships, but building up resilience through interpersonal relationships. We will touch upon each one of these in the next sessions, um, coming sessions. And E stands for evolving through engagement of, through our activities. And M standing for, of course, the meaning and purpose of life and accomplishment, as I said, we're going to touch upon the rewiring tools to evolve. And we will take each one of these in different sessions. And this, and during this session, we are going to look into the positive emotions, standing for gratitude, compassion, empathy, love. And specifically, I will be focusing on gratitude this time. And again, touching that with uh, combining that with the meaning and purpose of life. We had talked about the meaning and purpose of life before, saying that each one of us will have a different meaning to the life that we are leading and also different purpose. And not only that, the same person will have a different purpose at different stages in our life. That is, that is how um, it talks about, right? One second. So from a scientific perspective, we said, there is one purpose to all the human beings, whether we know it or not. And the purpose of human life is to be evolving. And the same thing when we speak from the scriptural perspective, the meaning of life as our master Ramakrishna says is nothing but God realization. That is said from the bhakti angle. But if we take it from the jnana angle, or the Vedantic perspective, that same God realization becomes self realization. Self with a capital S, understanding ourselves will lead to understanding God. But from a scientific perspective, he said the purpose of human life is to be evolving. So, keeping this in mind, let us look into gratitude as a positive emotion and see what this entails in the next 20 minutes or so. And then I will open it up for discussion. There is a saying, you know, you cannot live a positive life with the negative mind. It's very easily understood, goes without saying. Then if that is the case, again, meaning a per and meaning and purpose of life combining with the positive mind. We talked about this again last session. I'm just gonna briefly mention so that it will help us to connect with the meaning and purpose of life and taking gratitude as a, a token um, uh, emotion of positive emotion. Whether we know it or not, we are all heading towards increasing our happiness or finding happiness or joy and to decrease the suffering that we may have. And of course, we will have some kind of suffering sometime or other in our lives. And we talked about what suffering is all about. Suffering is nothing but the pain at the physical level. When it is relived again and again at a mental level, it becomes suffering. And again, one of the quotes is, pain is inevitable. The physical pain when we are born as human beings is inevitable. 
However, suffering is optional. So when we are looking at either increasing our happiness or looking for happiness and decreasing the suffering, how, how do we look at it? I think this little cartoon explains it all. See the two characters in the cartoon. It's looking at it and then says, where did you get that happiness? I'm looking for it, searching for it everywhere. This is what we do, right? We look for happiness while we go out and work. We look for happiness when we come to the ashram. We look for happiness when we go on vacation. We are always looking for happiness and seeking happiness, searching for happiness wherever we can find. However, look at this cartoon. So um, meaningfully it says, yes, if you keep looking outside, you cannot get it. And I have created this myself, this happiness. So profound. We know this. That happiness, we cannot look for it. We, It is already inside us. And it is our birthright. And it is our innate emotion, that happiness that is always there within us. When we look at it from scriptural perspective or from a scientific perspective, that is what we get. Uh, somebody, either Sharad or Sanjeev, can you please mute the other... Uh, Thank you. Even though we know all of this, we still keep looking for happiness outside of us. This is because we keep forgetting. We keep forgetting. That's okay. It happens. But that's why we need to be reminded of it again and again and again. So what does that mean? Happiness is an inside job. We cannot get it from outside. Yes, I can understand. But how? How do we seek it inside is the question that automatically comes to each and every one of us. The easiest way is to see that don't make happiness as a goal to go look for it, either outside or, in, or inside. Happiness has to be a byproduct. With whatever we are doing, whatever activity, it, happiness has to ensue. If we do that activity, if we do any work from the right perspective, with the right attitude, this is where we can actually remember this as proper attitude and proper action. P-A-P-A. -A. You can... Remember this acronym, P-A-P-A, -A, proper attitude, proper action. So any action, if we do it with the right attitude, then happiness becomes a byproduct. We cannot make that as a goal and go work for it. And happiness has to ensue. If that is the case, then how? How do we find it within us or how do we create and how do we make it as a byproduct? You know, again, this is the question that automatically comes to us. This is where the new um, research in neuroscience comes to our rescue. Whatever I'm going to be speaking now in the next few slides, it's all evidence-based research. And there is ample evidence to show how gratitude can lead to happiness because we have all heard about gratitude right so what is the connection between gratitude and happiness the relationship between gratitude and happiness is that you know we we know this most religious people are naturally grateful. And we have seen this with our parents, with our grandparents, how grateful they were for everything that was happening in their lives. But somewhere along the line, we have lost that to be able to 
feel that gratefulness with our everyday chores, everyday activity. You might say, doing chores we need to be grateful for? Absolutely. Starting from the daily chores, it is possible for us to be grateful. Forget about daily chores. Even when we wake up in the morning, if we really think about it, at least at my age, I'm so grateful because at this age, I'm up. I woke up this morning. That itself I need to be grateful for. So I have an opportunity another day to be evolving to a better human being. So if we have to eat, if I can digest that food, then we need to be grateful for, for digesting the food so that we become hungry. We have to be grateful that we are hungry and we have to be grateful for people who bring the food on our plate. And so we know religious people are naturally grateful. So we, we would usually think, you know, if somebody has everything what they have at that age, at our age of grandparents and whatnot, of course, they're naturally grateful. You know, what the new neuroscience research shows is that it's not that happy people are grateful, but it is the other way around. Grateful people are happy. Yes, this might come as a shock, but as I said, this is based on research, evidence-based research. They have done plenty research to show us with, if we are grateful for the things that we have, that is what leads to happiness. Whereas if we make happiness as a goal, what is that we'll be looking for? We will be looking for things that we don't have so that we ask and we go seek for things to make us happy. That's exactly the opposite that I'm talking about. It is not the things that we get, we go seek for, we go buy things that make us happy. But be able to afford such things and to be able to have those things if we are grateful for, that is what makes us happy. And if you go just a little bit deeper, we will see, you know, when we are grateful, we are focusing on the things that we have. Whereas if we are focusing on being happy, we are focusing on things that we don't have. So we are seeking for those things to make us happy. Even if we understand this aspect, the interpersonal, I mean, the relationship between great, being grateful and being happy, I think this says it all. Which means, again, if I have to just say this in one sentence, whatever I have explained so far about being grateful, knowing why we do what we do is the beginning of all wisdom. Like why, why is it that we are doing any activity for that matter? Anything that we do, if we know why we are doing it, that will take care of many, many things that we can be grateful for so that we can be happy. Most of the things we do it in an automatic manner, in a mechanical manner, in an autopilot mode, not even thinking, why am I doing this? Why am I eating this? Am I really hungry to be eating this? Or just because it is lunchtime, am I eating this? If we just keep asking that why, because I always say, you know, science is all about why. If we know why we are doing what we are doing, that will take us many steps ahead and that will lead to the wisdom that we may have. So all of this means is gratitude is the key to happiness and not the other way round. So if that's the case, gratitude 
is the foundation for happiness. So if we want to be happy, all we need to do is to be grateful for the things that we have. If we can do that, I think that will lead to being happy. So choose to be grateful. It doesn't happen automatically. It's a choice that we need to make. Do we take things for granted or do I need to be grateful for the things that I have? Let us choose to be grateful because this is the surest way to be happy about. Before concluding and opening up the session for uh, Q and A, I just want to tell you a short story with the help of uh, a, a cartoon here, animated uh, slide. There is this blind beggar. He's looking for arms. He's sitting on a step, as you can see, and he says, I'm blind. Please help me. Somebody has written that little signboard. He's kept that and he's waiting for people to give him money. Yes, people do give him hardly a cent here or a cent there or whatever, a dime. But one person sees this and he says, he asks this person, can I help you? Can I change that board? And the beggar says, sure, please go ahead and do it. And he says, this may help you. Let me change that. And so he changes that board. And then he puts that sign board next to this beggar who is blind. And he goes away. And he comes back in the evening to see how this beggar is doing. And you know, the blind people, they are very acute with their sense of hearing. He could tell by just hearing the footsteps that it's the same person who came in the morning to help him change that board. And he asked him, what did you write on that board? Because after you left, I have gotten so much money from people. I would like to know what is it that you have written? And the person says, you know, I just wrote. Today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see it. Just that. So what happened here? He's not even asking people to help him. He just wrote, today is a beautiful day. I cannot see. And he's just waiting for the arms. And the people saw that. That reminded them how grateful they are for their eyesight. And this poor beggar cannot even see this such a beautiful day. That kindled more compassion and empathy, which helped them to give more of that charity. It's not that earlier the people were not as compassionate or not. We go about in during our day. It's such a busy day. We don't even wait, as they say, to smell the roses and let alone have compassion on somebody. Out of sympathy, we put some coins, not out of empathy or compassion. The first sign that he wrote brought about sympathy in people. And sympathy is not one of the greatest um, uh, uh, greatest quality, I would say. However, empathy is better because if, when we have sympathy, there is a hierarchical feeling and somebody is lower than us. So we have sympathy and whatever we have, we just throw the coins and then leave. Usually that is what happens with sympathy. But this sign, it created or it formed a lot more empathy and compassion, kindled compassion and empathy. And they could feel the other person, how oh, he's not able to see such a beautiful day. 
And that is what led to giving more. So let us keep this story in the back of our mind and see what is it that we are grateful for, the things that we have, for the people that we have, for a guru, guru that we have. If we are initiated devotees, the first and foremost thing that we need to be is to be grateful that we have found a guru. So with this, I would like to just conclude then how, how can we practice this gratefulness in our lives, in our everyday lives on a moment to moment basis. All we need to do is to develop an attitude of gratitude. Keep a journal, gratitude journal, and just write a couple of things every day that what we are grateful for. And there are many other ways to be grateful. I'm just going to touch upon this and then move on to the Q&A session. I can talk about other ways of developing attitude of gratitude and different people can choose different ways of developing this attitude of gratitude. But sitting at the same place, at the same time, there is a reason for all of this, uh, a neuroscientific reason, because that is what helps us to develop a habit. And sitting at the same place, at the same time, right two or three things you are grateful for that day and try to change that every day to newer things. Maybe you can keep one common thing that you want to be grateful for every day and at least two new things, right? What is it that you're grateful for for that day or for any other day for that matter and see how you will feel following that after a few days. So thank you. With this, I'm going to stop my presentation here. Thank you, uh, Dr. Vastare, uh, for a very positive uh, and inspiring uh, session. Uh, we are very grateful uh, to be uh, in your presence also uh, this evening and for all the uh, positive and inspiring wisdom that you always share with us. Uh, we're also very, very grateful for this very uh, precious moment uh, that, we, that we have right now, this, this moment right now, the, the present moment. So we're also very grateful for that. Um, uh, sisters and brothers, uh, just an announcement. Uh, our next uh, devotee well-being session, which is a session three, uh, will take place on Sunday. Day, 19th of May at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, so please do invite your friends and family to join this devotee well-being program with Dr. Vastare. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Vastare and dear sisters and brothers uh, for a very inspiring evening. And uh, we look forward uh, to the next session uh, with Dr. Vastare. Thank you for attending. Have a blessed night. Jai Shri Krishna.